Recently, a massive document was released on a very popular Roblox animator called Notive. The tweet states, Coming out about Notive, he is a groomer and has manipulated many others in private. Below is a document detailing his actions. Now before I get into the main bulk of this video when I'm going over the documents and stuff, I recommend you treat this video as basically like an audiobook. And I recommend you to leave this video playing in the background and listen to most of the video to get a full grasp of the entire situation. Now, the underage victim in this situation called Alf has made multiple posts regarding this situation in which we will read first. And let me preface this by stating that notive to my knowledge with the evidence provided is not a pedophile because the age gap was 2 years and 11 months. However, he is extremely manipulative to multiple people and has groomed Alf. Now, after the document was released, Alf came out and said some stuff I wanted to say about Notive. Sorry for all of this so suddenly. This is not my full experience. Just a summary of my feelings right now. I have told my parents about everything and I'm being supported, so thanks for your time. Hi. For some time I've been struggling dealing with all of the weight that this man has put onto me from when I was 15 to 16. I've been coerced by someone I had genuinely admired into doing things that I did not enjoy. I've been heavily objectified and sexualized by this person who I trusted deeply. This man knew so much about me and my past experiences with assault and people exactly like him. I wish I was able to get help earlier and not after. Now I have to live with these scars forever. The weeks leading up to the document finally being published, I have been feeling very anxious and paranoid. Things that he had shown me were engraved into my head. I remember so well telling him that I was scared seeing him masturbate, but he had insisted that it was okay. This moment was one of the worst things I've had while in that relationship. I remember him getting upset at me constantly. I thought I was wrong at the time. I had hated when he was sad. I just wanted to make him happy. I remember him making me feel bad because I didn't want to have a sexual video call with him. Just a normal one. Self-admittedly, I'm very impressionable. I keep thinking that this is my own fault. I just wanted his attention and in the end, everything worked out horribly. Thank you to the people who reached out to me to add my part to the document as I was too scared to make my own. Thank you to my friends and all who trusted me. Now here is the document. Regarding Notive. This document was made together by a group to share their own experiences with Notive and to warn and inform the public as to Notive's harmful private behavior towards his close friends and ex-partners. The contents of this document should not be held responsible to a single person involved. Before reading, please note, please do not harass anyone involved in this situation including Notive, especially as they wish to remain anonymous. This document serves to spread awareness and shed light on Notive's harmful behavior towards others in private, and to prevent others from experiencing such in the future. Some editors of this document were once close friends with Notive, and it is disappointing and upsetting to them that it had to even be made. Thank you. If you're reading on mobile, the images may appear pixelated and blurry. If this happens, easier access slash viewing can be made on a desktop device. Document mentions. Grooming mentioned pedophilia, sexual and emotional abuse, NSFW, and porn addiction. And I'll categorize this video into the certain topics as presented in the document so it's easier for you guys to find what you're looking for. Notive's apology and past actions. Who is Notive? Jacob, also known as Notive, is a popular YouTuber who creates comedic videos and animations revolving around the Roblox platform. He has over 180,000 subscribers and over 28 million views. He is known for his unique animation style and has culminated a large fan base over the years. As of recently, he has been on an ongoing hiatus and has been previously exposed for his sexual tendencies, including having a Roblox R34 porn account. The Roblox porn account by the name of Zovasi started raising suspicions before he was exposed because of the two accounts' similar animation styles. He was exposed by a former ex about owning the Zavasi account in September of 2022. Anxious over the following backlash, he chose to hide away from the accusations with the exception of a response document detailed below and seeked support from his friends privately. Afraid of losing his platform and star creator title, he started to respond to the situation shortly after it surfaced. His apology. On September 19th, 2022, Notive released a document summarizing the accusations of him having a Roblox porn account called Zavasi. 
Despite claiming that he is completely against Roblox R34 many times publicly, he claimed to condone every action revolving around his porn addiction and was extremely apologetic about his decisions. While having a fan base full of minors, it raised concern amongst his fans and affected his reputation significantly. And they show a screenshot of Notif saying on September 19th, I've decided to come forward with the details over the past few days about a situation that I've gotten a lot of people to help me out with. He later removed it from his Twitter timeline for an unknown reason. We know this is old news, but we want to address it as it is extremely important to remember his porn addiction. Now this is what his apology document said called coming forward. Preface. I'm going to start this by saying that I do not condone any of the behavior that I've stated below, and that I've been treated for my issues privately. I'm entirely sincere in acknowledging my faults, and I'm making sure to put forward the best effort not to repeat past mistakes. Being chronically online can have extremely detrimental effects on somebody's well-being and state, and I am no stranger to this nature. I am so 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 ashamed of what I am about to tell everyone here, and I just want to clarify that I do not stand by this behavior anymore. Everything has since then been wiped. None of this was ever meant to be public, and the public never knew about it because I tried everything in my power to keep it from my audience. I see both of these identities I've created as two absolutely separate entities. None of the notive social media accounts have ever been associated with this sort of content, let alone to any miners in general for what I could control. Addiction. From 2017 to 2018, I was continually harassed and belittled for the sort of YouTube content I have created, for being too random, and for having the humour be seen as lacklustre in some parts. I've been extremely depressed for weeks, my condition was not improving at all, and I was only keeping myself going just not to let the people harassing me win. At some points I had absolutely nobody, and because I had not developed a clear coping mechanism for any of these issues, I decided to turn to NSFW content to grant me some euphoria to distract me. It wasn't pretty. It's not easy admitting to an addiction like this knowing the humiliation I will most likely get, and I am still struggling, but to a far lesser extent, and I am much happier these days as I have surrounded myself with much better people. I still get urges here and there, but none, but none of it has affected my interactions with anyone for almost a year now. The account. Once 2021 had begun to roll around, I had not had a stable relationship or a friend group in years. I was still in the same poor state as before, and sometimes I engaged in this bad habit daily, and this was when it began to trickle into my hobbies. I knew my animation skills had become much better within the past year, and one and one night I had gotten extremely down to the point where I decided to animate NSFW on Roblox. There is no sugarcoating what I did. I created a character for the animation, located models on a frighteningly public Discord server, and made do with it. I then uploaded it to a Twitter account known by the handle at Zilvasi, which has long been since deactivated. I uploaded to a much lesser extent to a Reddit by the same name, which has also been deleted recently, as I'd completely forgotten about it. I had also not been active in over a year. I was 17 when I made my first animation of this, and I stopped a few months into being 18. I am extremely ashamed that this account was run actively for 6 months. I couldn't upload on my channel at all as my life was completely out of order, and I couldn't do anything about it because I had an addiction to it. I understand people who say just stop doing it are only trying to help people with these addictions, but it takes a much larger effort to move past something I've dealt with for years. In no way do I condone my actions caused by this account. I made sure it was completely disconnected from my channel to the point where I did everything privately, and I made 100% sure the account had no miners plastered all over it. When I deactivated the account, I had over 10,000 followers. I could not control whether or not underage people saw it, and I'm sorry if it caused any damage to the community. Any trace of the accounts and its content have been deleted to the extent of what I could delete, and any remaining evidence of this identity's existence are either not uploaded by me and slash or are not accessible to me. Conclusion I could have easily denied all of this for the rest of eternity, but I felt my situation would be a good way to reach out to other people who are struggling with the same issues. There are whole communities out there that are dedicated to this, not even limited to Roblox. If any of you know or find out about anybody going through this, please contact them. 
help them out before it hurts them. If they know somebody out there cares about them, maybe it will help them overcome what I could not at the time. And then no tips apology document ends right there. Now, as the current document proceeds to state, some images may appear pixelated and blurry. Please zoom in if you have to. In the document, Notif confirmed the ownership of the account and claimed that he regretted it strongly. He claims to have already deactivated it much longer before he was exposed for owning the account. He promised his fans that he would be overcoming his issues with his porn addiction and decided to take a break from social media. Many fans and friends supported him on his journey of succumbing his addiction. It should be noted that several people involved have stated that he never actually got over his addiction. Now here we get to the main part of the document. The names of the people involved will be anonymous and will be displayed as colours seen below. Directly affected people. Blue, Notiv's underaged former partner who's actually come out and her name is Alf. So Alf is blue. Every time blue's mentioned is Alf. Pink is also another one of Notiv's former partners. And Peach is Notiv's other former partner and close friend. Now we have friend group A, so red is a former close friend, yellow is a former close friend, and purple is another former close friend. And in friend group B, cyan is a former friend, and grey is a former friend. So that is all of the people regarding this situation. Now moving on to Notif's porn addiction. As mentioned before, Notif has a history with a porn addiction that is self-admitted for a long time, and he has opened up about this to his close friends and said that it's affected him throughout his career on YouTube and Roblox, with his former friend Yellow stating, Same, I just noticed that Jacob, also known as Notif, is extremely horny. When I first met him, he had this masturbating app that lets him know how long he's been free for. I don't know, there's more to it, but I can't explain it all at once. It's just been a recessive pattern. Note of uploading furry not safe for work on Roblox, and then here's the source to the still existing um, t-shirt on the site. This decal was uploaded around 2020, and it's of a raccoon, and as you can see here, yep, Notif was the one who uploaded this, and Notif stated here, It's a picture of a raccoon getting a cheese grater shoved up its butt. Notif admitting to sending porn to the victim, Blue, also known as Alf. On September the 15th, 2022, Notif had messaged Red that he's been sending porn to Blue, also known as Alf, who he was aware was a minor. 15 just turned 16 when Notif was still 18 turning 19, so there was a 2 year 11 month age gap. It's not pedophilic, but it certainly is pretty weird. Despite being aware of their age gap of almost 3 years, he would send explicit messages and would ask for suggestive slash NSFW art trades with Blue, also known as Alf. Reminder, Blue's birthday is in August, and Notif's birthday is in September. Please note that at this period of time, they've only known each other for around three to four weeks. So with the context of this screenshot, Brody is Notif's alternate account. So it starts with saying, it's hot, me and Blue, and then Red, who's a former friend, says, STFU. Brody states, I showed Blue my Roblox porn, and then Red says, help? Then Brody says, yeah, he also admitted he drew porn, and then it states here, it had been stated by Blue that he had never drew Not Safe For Work before, until Notif started pressuring him to do so. Blue would draw suggestive artworks for him for most of the time. Then Brody continues to state, but um, now we want to make stuff of each other. And then it states here, according to Blue, Notif was the one that first requested not safe for work and suggestive artworks for him every time. Then Brody continues to say, help. And then Red says, what the hell, are they 18? And then Brody, also known as Notif, says, um, I know it's a little taboo to draw younger than 18, but it's staying completely between us. And then it states him being completely aware of what he was doing. Red's former friend says, true, I mean true. And then Brody states, I think we might be inseparable. The document continues by stating, Notif was fully aware of Blue's age, but chose to persist in his behavior and actions, maintaining a veil of secrecy around their sexual activities. As mentioned in the screenshot, Blue addressed that Notif took the initiative in proposing explicit art exchanges. Editors note, making porn of minors is obviously weird, but calling it taboo is even weirder. Conversation between Blue and a peer. 
Blue, the underage victim in this situation, also known as Alf, stated, he is incredibly porn addicted and has never gotten better despite everything he said intentionally. And then the person who's color coded as white states, yikes, so it was all lies and fetishes in that group? Blue states, I'd say emotional and sexual abuse, I don't know if saying it was just that. We did have some normal conversations that kept it afloat. And then white says, I see. Proofs that Brody is Notif's alternate account. So, Notif here states, yo, my DevX request got approved. And then Purple states, what's DevX? And then Notif states, exchanging Robux for money. Red states, what is DevX? Holy crap, you're rich. Notif states, I'm gonna get over $4,000. Then Purple says, wait, I thought you already have that. Notive states, I mean I did, but now I'm actually turning it into real Z's monies. And then Purple says, oh. Then Notive shows uh, 4,074 USD given to his account in PayPal. Red states, WTF, yippee, money. And then Purple says, monas. Then another screenshot shows that Notive's posting his face saying, crawling in my skin. And then Yellow says, your hair is brown. And then another tweet by Notive's actual account showing, yes, it's the same person because there's another selfie of them and they look identical. And there's a tweet stating, I'm finally free to animate Roblox for the rest of my life. And there's another screenshot of Brody's Discord account and another screenshot of Notive stating, I'm releasing the document with Blue saying, yeah, that's probably what's best. Saw the new tweet and it got more reach, unfortunately. Then Notive states, wait, what new tweet? Blue states, you didn't see it? She made like a new thread. And then Notif literally states himself, Brody, and then gives his alternate Discord account and says, This is my account for now, with Blue saying, Alright. So it's pretty obvious that Brody is literally Notif. Notif suspected not safe for work alternate account. Notif is suspected to have run another not safe for work account called Faco before he was called out by his ex, who is color coded as pink, who he dated prior to Alf, also known as Blue, for owning the Zavasi account. This second account had been up and active until September the 20th, 2022. Suspiciously, the account was deleted around the same time Notif had been called out by Pink for running the first account, Zolvasi. When searching the name on Twitter, you, you can see the latest replies towards the account and they provided a screenshot of, you know, obviously activity situated around the name Fake Code. We can only assume this account was made after he'd broken up with his former ex, thus why it was not mentioned in the thread his ex created. Blue recounts a time when Notive admitted to showing him his not safe work animations while in a VC one to two months before the call out post, with the animation that had been shown in one of the fake codes. The animation had been archived on R34. Blue also recounts the same animation becoming a joke in the Kaiju Paradise community, basically a Roblox game based on a not safe for work furry game with a fan base consisting of entirely minors, and there's actually a couple predators in that community as well. Making this claim add up to how it's being referenced in the screenshot above. The existence of the second account had not been known by Blue until long after they had broken up, with a screenshot of Brody, also known as Notive, saying, I showed Alf my Roblox not safe for work. The Brody account is one of Notive's alternate Discord accounts he had used, as mentioned on a past page. This screenshot backs up Blue's claim. Looking at the animation, don't, you can see a very similar animation style to that of Notives. This was even being said in the replies of said archived video, with an anonymous account saying, This kind of reminds me of Notives animation, and as you can see here the post being entirely blurred for all of your sanity. Another thing to note is, while this account was active, Notive was in a friend group of multiple minors all around the age of 14 to 16. The document continues with confronting Notive in brackets friend group A. Over time, Yellow from friend group A became increasingly aware of an overwhelming influx of tweets on Notive's private account, all expressing admiration for his underage partner. It's important to note that most of the content referencing Blue has been deleted from his private account following their breakup. With Notive, with Alf's name kind of in his name as well on his private account stating, I think Alf, also known as Blue, is generally the one for me. Honestly the best relationship I've ever been in. We both accept and love each other and I'm literally so happy in brackets gay equals happy to be with him. And then they state again on another private account, Miss Alf, sad face. Both of these are Notive's private accounts. First name is slightly censored because part of it contains the name of said victim, which we now know as Alf. 
Yellow decided to confront him about this as they weren't confirmed about Blue's real age and were troubled about it. Conversation between Yellow and Notive, and as you can see here we got messages. Notive says yeah, and then Yellow states, Jacob, I have a question for you. Notive states, que, meaning what? And Yellow says, how old is your boyfriend? Notive states, 16. Yellow states, turning 17? Notive says, yes. Yellow states, oh, okay. Notive states, what? Crying emoji. Why did you ask like that? Yellow states, Oh, because I saw on Twitter and was curious. Notive says, oh. Notive continues by stating, um, why is that the first thing you ask, LMAO? Yellow states, because I saw his bio said, under 18. Notive states, ah, I see. Yeah, I made sure everything was within legality. We started dating when we were only two years apart, and I was a little frightened after I became another year older. Notive continues by stating, everything is A-OK -okay, though, I don't think it's anything to worry about, I did my research. Notive continues by stating, Actually, I do think it's kinda weird you asked either way, since I know some accusations were flying around about me, pertaining to the drama that happened. Surely it's not related to any of that, right? Yellow continues by stating, I can't recall any drama or accusations with that, but I'm kind of weirded out and just wanted to confirm with you. Notive continues by stating, Wait, what do you mean? Can you elaborate? It's kind of upsetting that you didn't bring this up earlier. Yellow states, it's unusual but it depends to be honest. Then Notive continues by stating, There's no way I would have gone into a relationship knowing it was illegal. I'm not that type of person. It's disgusting. I don't want you to see me as that kind of per- I don't want you to see me as that type of person, so I guess your comments are just making me kind of anxious. Then the document continues by stating, Regarding the fact that he was completely aware of the circumstances of their relationship, he stated that he was disgusted by the idea of doing something illegal within the relationship. He claimed that he's done his research and reassured Yellow, aka his ex-former friend, that their relationship was happy and healthy between the two parties. Any potential defense and excuses he might attempt should not lead to any misunderstandings. There is no making any excuses he may try to pry. He was and still is aware of what he was doing and how he was handling it. He understood the choices and consequences he is facing slash making, despite the fact of him claiming to be opposed to something illegal. Red and Yellow Confronting Notive The conversation below is regarding Notive's private tweets about Blue, also known as ALF. Notive has always been extremely aroused, especially by romantic relationships, and it has become an increasing problem, affecting himself and his peers surrounding him. Yellow, Notive's ex-friend, states, Same, I just noted that Jacob, aka Notive, is extremely horny. When I first met him, he had this masturbating app that lets him know how long he's been free for. I don't know, there's more to it, but I can't explain it all at once, it's just been a recessive pattern. Red, also known as Notive's ex-friend, stated, Yeah, I think he's extremely touch starved and I just feel so concerned for Blue, also known as Alf. Red states, right, in reply to Yellow stating, it's just been a recessive pattern. Yellow continues by stating, he is so possessive of things as well, with Red also stating, I just feel like although it's his spam, his tweets are concerning, like it feels almost obsessive. And then Red replies he is to Yellow's message stating he's so possessive of things as well. And then Yellow finishes it off by stating, he says that Blue is the one, but I believe that he's just very, very, very desperate. Now in the next screenshot is what Notive said right after the private messages we've gone over with Yellow and him. So he states, yes, I made sure everything was legal. We started dating when he was 16 and I was 18. I don't know, what was kind of said made me sad because Yellow was apparently weirded out by my private tweets when all I talked about was how much I appreciated him. Nothing really inherently sexual or whatnot. It feels like Yellow is constantly questioning me and I am kind of at a loss. It's kind of becoming increasingly hard to talk to Yellow. I can see you streaming me, LMFAO. Okay, we'll have to talk then. I need to know what's going on. And then under the document states, This was after Yellow had questioned Notive's partner age, to which he confronted slash ranted to Red about how upset he was that Yellow supposedly assumed he was in an inappropriate relationship with a minor and an age gap of near three years, and thought that Yellow had implied that he had sexual encounters with Blue. Yellow and Red already knew about the situation with untold sexual art traits slash conversations between Blue and Notive, conjecturing them much more. The three of them arranged a discussion to talk about Notive's relationship
relationship with Blue also known as Alf. Yellow and Red express their concern about Blue's maturity and the age gap between him and Notif. Notif seemingly answered rationally and reassured them with their troubled questions. Note, Notif said in quotations was in reference to his partner's age. His partner was still 16 at the time of writing that. Notif met him at 15 whilst he was 18. A month after Blue turned 16, Notif turned 19. After discussion, the discussion between the three went unexpectedly well, wiping Yellow and Red's withholding distress. They entrusted Notif with the situation as the more experienced mature partner to handle the relationship in a healthy manner, with someone far much younger with no experience. However, we had no clue what was going on behind closed doors between the two. Conversation between Blue and Notif after Yellow confronted him. Notif states, Hi, I'm not comfortable with saying this out loud because one of my friends confronted me about your age when I was on the verge of sleeping. I cleared up with them in a call though. Then Blue states, Oh what? And then Notif said, yeah, they said it was a bit unusual, and Blue states, ah? And then Notif states, but they don't think I'm a bad person or whatever. Blue states, who? And then Notif states, yellow. Blue states, I don't know who that is. Then Notif states, yellow from the shirtless black man server. And then Blue states, oh. Then the conversation continues, Notif stating, and after I told them about your situation a bit, they understood that I don't have any bad intentions. Oh my god, this aged horrendously. Notif continues by stating, yeah, I didn't want to be dishonest. It's because you had under 18 in your bio. Blue continues by stating, oh, what'd you say? And then Notif continues by stating, I talked about how much I cared about you and that I didn't really want to leave you and how you had a lot to focus on every day. At your age, it's very easy to become extremely over-reliant on the other person. So I told them how you do the military workout, your future plans. Then Notif replies to his older message by stating, I don't think you're overly reliant at all. I know you do your work regardless. Then Blue continues by stating, Thank you, I don't think our age gap is that bad. I turned 17 in a couple months. Now the document moves into a more serious subject about the grooming by stating, Notif was fully aware and accountable for everything he chose to do. This part of the document will go over how Notif has groomed Blue, also known as Alf. Guilt tripping. According to Blue, Notif would constantly make Blue feel shame for refusing to partake in sexual video calls slash exchanges in the relationship. The age gap between between Notif and Blue was three years, as Notif was waiting for him to turn 16. Apparently after Blue turned 16, Notif suddenly started catching feelings and became more affectionate, getting progressively more sexual towards Blue during his relationship with him. Blue states, but I can provide a short summary of some of the things I was projected to while in that relationship. When I was 15 I met Notif. At the time he was 18 and continued on the relationship till only a few months ago. The age gap is of three years. While in that relationship, Notif was incredibly sexual towards me and at some points would make me feel bad for not wanting to show him my body on video call. I remember one time I told him I wanted to video call and he assumed I wanted to show myself off to him sexually on that call, only to make him incredibly disappointed when I didn't. Notif at many points would make me feel horrible for the slightest things. Because of him constantly getting upset at me, I would try to do things to his favour despite being uncomfortable just so I wouldn't have to see him mad. Another video call took place either before or after the first. No, I'm going off my memory. None of my experience is written here in order. Where Notif asked profusely for me to watch him masturbate despite me telling him constantly that I was scared. He assured me it was okay. That experience alone is something I can never get out my head. It's left me restless and disgusted. Notif was someone I admired dearly, and I thought he was really cool. I've told him this. I'm a victim of SA, and I've been groomed in the past. I've told Notif this, and he promised me he wouldn't be one of those people, yet he still let his desires get to him. A lot more was done to me, but these were some of the things that happened. Then Purple states, By the way, did he ask for the inappropriate art trade with you when you were 15 or 16? Blue states, Right after I turned 16, he developed feelings for me. A little bit after, he would animate a not safe for work Roblox animation of me. This animation was a part 2 to the other safe for work animation of us on some picnic. My avatar is the guy with the goggles on. I think he asked for me to draw not safe for work for him. I don't remember. I made suggestive artwork, but not not safe for work. I told him I couldn't because it was scary for me. 
Months after though, he would just ask me to draw not safe for work for nothing in return, so I just do it. The document continues by stating, Notif had never sent inappropriate photos or videos of himself to Blue, but he would ask for multiple sexually driven video calls with him instead. During one of these calls, he had shown himself masturbating to Blue, pressuring him to show his body during those video calls in which Blue refused. This is a way for him to hide his track to easily avoid being caught. As he was completely aware of what he was doing, this is proven by a follow-up where he admitted this to Red. And in the document, it shows Notive posting the said picnic video of him and Alf. And it states, proof of Notive posting a safe for work picnic animation of Blue in him. He made a not safe for work version as we've already discussed. Then another screenshot in the document is Blue stating, Link is a condo game. He had me make an alternate account to join him in one. Under is him sending me a Roblox not safe for work animation of us, since deleted, so it looks like I'm replying to nothing. The animation was really, really cringy for me to look at. And in the screenshot that Blue provided was messages with Notive linking a condo game, and then Blue stating question mark, it's cute lol, ah, dies, die, splashes. This one isn't like, and then Blue states, Notive is definitely into Roblox not safe for work content. Now the next segment of the document is Notive sexualizing Blue. Notif had also requested Blue to take pictures of himself in stockings that he had bought for Blue. Later in a VC, he'd masturbated to the photos of Blue wearing them. With Blue also known as Alf stating, They have a deep connection with him. Everything he'd gave to me in person, I had washed and thrown into a corner of my room. Notif at one point would buy me stockings, which I assume is a fetish for him because he masturbated to photos of me wearing them. Ugh. And then more screenshots come out here of Jacob, also known as Notif, stating, Hello! And then Alf, also known as Blue, stating, There is a scratch on my thigh, ignore it, and there's a heart reaction to it, and then Alf says, Stop! And then Notif says, you dug it out your closet and then you put it there. And then Alf said, no, there are two. And then Notif replied to Alf's message saying, there's a scratch on my thigh, ignore it with, I'll lick it better. And then Alf sends another photo which has a heart emoji on it. And then another screenshot, Jacob states, me, 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 me. And then Alf states, you. And then Notif states, draws and sends a very weird heart gif. And then another photo is sent and then Notive states, oh my god, I don't deserve this much. The document proceeds to state, the dotted circles next to photo indicates that he had taken screenshots of Blue's fires and mentioned the intention to masturbate to it later, in which he did later in a VC with Blue. The document shows a screenshot of Notive saying, hi gay, can I be honest? Ah, I don't want to be weird. And then Alf or soon as Blue says, what? And then Notive says, when we call, sometimes I jerk a bit and I don't tell you because I'm embarrassed. I can stop if you want, ah, uh, I did it twice to you today, and Blue states, really? And then Notif says, soon to be free, yeah, and document states, Notif admitting to Blue that he has masturbated in VC to them without them being aware, and then the next segment of the document states, Notif meeting up with Blue in person. Around late December 2022, Notif had planned to meet up with Blue in person with another artist friend that Blue wasn't very familiar with at the time. Blue decided not to show up during the meeting. This made Notive upset, causing him to act passive aggressive towards Blue. This aggression towards Blue made him feel like he had to see Notive in person, in an act of not disappointing him again. And the document provides proof of Notive's plan on going to Florida with an artist friend mentioned, and it shows Notive's private Twitter account stating, going to Florida and possibly meeting up with Blurred. Kind of awesome. Leaving for Florida at 4am, gotta stay up since I hate long car rides. Then another screenshot is shown of Blue stating, There was a time when Notif had wanted me to meet up with him and Blurred, someone I was really unfamiliar with then. Notif had wanted me to come with him despite me not wanting to, and because I didn't come, Notif was very passive aggressive and angry at me for something so mundane. He'd mention it to me a lot and I'd started to genuinely feel bad for not coming. I might have made a promise to him that we will meet up, in which we did months later. I would have not came if he didn't stress me about it in the past. He did this in the VCs too. I remember one day he said it made him pissed or whatever. His first plan on his meet up was to come to my city, find a parking space somewhere, and have you know what with me, slanted face. 
I called him with a friend, Blurred, after me and Notif hadn't been talking for a while. I think we were on break and not having sexual conversations till after we ended the call and Notif wanted me to join in a private call to discuss meeting up. Yellow Sense is the name of Blue's friend unrelated to their meeting in person. Notif initially planned on meeting up with Blue, a 16 year old at the time, for sex. Though they had broken up and this had not happened, Blue did see Notive in person, but nothing mentioned had taken place. And then Discord screenshots are shown here of Notive saying, Huh? Why you hate me? And Blue states, I don't. You're my BFF. You're so funny. And Notive states, come to Bush Gardens. And Blue states, no. And Notive states, why not? And then this red text here says, Some messages of him bothering me about not showing up. He would do this in VCs more often. And then, as you can see, the conversation continues with Blue stating, I don't wanna. And then Notice states, Do you hate amusement parks? And then Blue stated, I thought that was a restaurant. And then Notice states, What? No, look it up, silly. And then Blue states, I want to go, but I'm not going to be allowed to. And then Notive states, you never ask. And then another screenshot shows Blue stating, call me when you and Blood get there and I'll pretend I'm there as well. And then Notive sends a crying emoji. And then Blue states, I don't live in something Blood, and it says my high school. Notive states, ah yes, I also go to, and then joke about its name. Blue states, that's like a perfect way to describe it. Then Notif says, this sucks, and then Blue states, I promise you in the future I will see you, and Notif says, I'm going to see you, and you're not going to know. And now the document provides another screenshot of Notif telling Blue, also known as Alf, Dude, seriously, I don't know what you're accomplishing by leaving me in the dark. I'm not angry at you or anything, I just have no clue what even happened. Then Blue stated, just pretty uncomfortable around you, I've noticed. Then Notif states, huh? What about me is uncomfortable? You could have told me not to come visit you or something. I don't know where this is even coming from. Then Blue states, I don't know how to say it, but you started to remind me of people from the past. I'm scared to tell you fully because you have everything on me. Notif states, do you think I'm becoming too obsessed? I wouldn't use anything against you. Then Blue states, I'm trying to find reasons to believe what I'm thinking is false, but I don't know. I think you took advantage of me at some point. Then Notif states, Alf, also known as Blue, I was going through a bad spot. I've told you multiple times I regret all the things I did. It shouldn't have happened. I didn't want to have a negative impact on you. I tried to make things as right as possible afterwards. I don't feel that way towards you anymore and I feel horrible about it a lot. I was genuinely attracted to you and then Blue stated, I remember you saying we shouldn't have sexual conversations, telling me to go through all the messages I sent and delete them. I think I did most. Then I don't know how much later I was on call with you and, and white blur and we private called after you mentioned straight up what you wanted to do to me when we met up. Haven't told anyone about this if you're wondering. This is why I'm trying to avoid you. I feel awful talking to you because I think you're nice but I'm just scared of anything like that happening again. I don't think I was ever in the right mind. I'm just a kid wanting genuine appreciation. And then Notif stated, that will never happen, Alf. I've literally met you IRL and we've had a good time. I want nothing more than just being friends. I didn't want to make you uncomfortable at all. I told you that. And then in the following screenshot, the document underlines the I want nothing more than just to be friends by stating, after they broken up, Notif progressively became more jealous and obsessed of Blue for hanging out with more of his friends. He did not move on at all, even though he claimed himself to have. And then the conversation continues with Blue stating, It didn't happen, but you said all of that. And the note of said, I freaked up in the past and I wanted to show you I changed. I hardly think about weird situations like that anymore. I have a much more prominent life IRL and I've been connecting with more people. And then Blue states, just now remembering stuff you said to me, I don't think you're a bad person now, but bro. And then Notive states, I know and I regret it almost every day. And then Blue states, going to go now, my mum needs help with my dog. And then here's the guilt tripping segment where Notive states, okay, but uh, to pour what I truly think right now, you're the one who pulled me out of a really bad spot. I was kind of in a constant loop of thinking that this was the only way to be romantic with somebody. I also feel like I wouldn't have dated you if, if our ages were already 19 and 16 at the time we met. When we actually hooked up, the age gap felt smaller and just got more complicated as the months went on. Please at least try to separate me from what I once was. 
I treat you like I do with all my other friends now. I love hanging out with them, maybe treating them with something nice and just keeping in touch in general. If you ever felt like I did take advantage of you, just know that it was never my intention. I think all the events surrounding me just made my mindset worse by constantly reminding me of my issues. You have every right to put me in my place. I've even said that I regret not caring enough in the past because I was so caught up in my own loneliness. And a note of continues by stating, that's why I've been avoiding even the slightest mention of anything weird like that, even as a joke. I really don't do that with anyone now. And then he states, are you feeling better? Just tell me if we need space or something. I don't really know what to do about this. I felt horrible about this for a while now. And then the document proceeds to state, Notif was in call with Blue and one of Blue's friends. They were not having a sexual conversation with each other at the time until after Blue's friends, who's apparently the white blur, had ended the call. After the call, Notive DM'd Blue to have a private VC with him, and this is what was discussed earlier. This is when Notive discussed with him to meet up with each other and what he wanted to do with Blue when they met. During their conversation, Notif had told the victim that he wanted to have sex with him in a car at a parking lot when they met each other. And then, screenshot of Blue's friend ending the call. Note the dates of both screenshots and the time of the call and then it's here. White Blur started a call that lasted 3 hours and it was the 22nd of March 2023. Note the dates of both screenshots and the time of the first call and then here's the 23rd of March and it's note of stating do you want to call and discuss meeting up or do you want to sleep and then Blue states uh sure let me get in bed though and their document continues with stating Notive and Blue broke up on the 26th of April 2023. They still however planned on meeting with each other due to Blue feeling guilty for not showing up the first time. However, nothing sexual happened between them, but that can be excused by the fact that they were not in a romantic relationship anymore. Proof is given in a document that Notive and Blue actually met in person with a screenshot of messages with Blue stating to Jacob, also known as Notive, You saw my dad, I'm dying. And Notive replied, LOL, it's okay. Did your dad say anything? And Blue, also known as Alf, replied, No. And Notive replies, LOL. Then Blue states, You saw my ugly dog. And Notive replies, It's in a pink, ugly cone. Then Blue states, Tell your dad I said hi again, and thank you. Now the document brings up how Notive terminated evidence of sexual activities, with a screenshot here of all of Notive's messages magically disappeared, and it just looks like in this screenshot, the only messages still standing are Blue's. Notive had already deleted a significant portion of his conversations with Blue. According to Blue, Notive was cautious during their exchanges of explicit text, aiming to conceal any traces or evidence of their interactions. This proves that Notive was self-aware of the consequences of his choices. And screenshots accompany this, with Blue stating what happened, and Jacob said, She wants us to delete our sexual conversations. I want to do it too, to be honest, because I think it's wrong. We should really stay safe on this. If you want, I could direct you to the messages you have to delete. And then Blue states, I can't right now, I'm in school. Are you doing the same thing as before? I really don't want us to stop talking. And Jacob, also known as Notif, states, No, I just want us to delete stuff. I'll direct you to the messages that you have to delete. And Blue states, What did you tell her? And Notif states, I told her I never sent any pics or anything. We just had a few sexual conversations. And then Blue replies with a cat gif and a message stating, Sorry for the troubles, I feel dumb looking back at all of that. Ah! And then Notif states, It's okay, I just want to be your positive reinforcement from now on. And Blue states, I consider you one trying to get my work in right now. And then the document states, Context above on the left. Notif, realizing what he was doing was wrong, tells Blue that they should be more cautious about their sexual sessions together. Note that after these messages were sent, Notif would continue these conversations, but would ultimately delete them after. The her mentioned in the screenshots refers to his mother, who he had lied to. While Notif had never sent explicit pictures to Blue, there were still the previously mentioned video calls in which we've gone over in this video already. Now another screenshot shown is Notif stating, I feel bad that you had to go through that, and Blue states, Oh, why does it matter if I do or not? And then Notif states, what do you mean? And then Blue states, delete. And then Notif says, it reflects on me poorly and I should be a better partner. I don't want to look back on that. And then Blue states, oh, is it easier to delete on computer? And Notif states, yee. 
and in blue states. I was doing it all on my phone and notice states, if you hover over press shift and hold shift then delete the message button, it deletes faster and it states here, Discord DM of Notive telling him how to delete DMs efficiently. Now this part of the document details the breakup and states Blue and Notive have broken up on the 26th of April 2023. After Blue and Notive had split, Notive soon became obsessed with Blue. He had grown jealous of another friend Blue had been talking to and expressed his jealousy through passive aggressiveness and in an attempt to make him feel bad for going his own way after the relationship. Notif would vent in a friend group B's server about Blue right in front of him and Blue was a member of this server and had been reading his messages live. Notif wanted Blue to stay close to him and Blue began to become severely uncomfortable around Notif. The thought of what he could have done to him resulted in Blue slowly cutting off Notif. Afterwards Notif began messaging Blue's mutual friends as well as his own about Blue. So as you can see in this screenshot, Notive mentions uh, their mutual friend and the mutual friend replies, Hi, hello. Notive states, Hello, has Blue been alright lately? He's kind of been talking to me less and I don't know lately, he seemed slightly off. I don't know if I did something wrong. He just deleted his emote server too, so maybe it might be something deeper. And then the mutual says, Oh, I didn't know that. Um, he seems pretty okay to me. We're still talking here and there, but... We're both busy, so we don't call as much as we used to. And then Notif proceeds to say, mood. And then the mutual says, other than that, yeah, he seems okay. Notif states, I kind of just got home from vacation, man. I hate being stressed. And then the mutual says, oh, is there something wrong? And then Notif states, I've tried seeing if he was alright, and I don't know, something really threw him off. And he asked me to stop messaging him. I think I might have pressured him a bit too much, didn't mean to do that. And then in another screenshot, Notive states, yeah, Blue just soft blocked me on his all, and then the mutual says, huh? And then Notive says, I have literally no clue what I did, this crap is making me so anxious, and then the mutual says, hmm. Then Notive says, I don't know what to do, dude, and then the mutual says, I'd say just give him some time, and Notive says, I don't know how to get my mind off of it. And then it says, the person who censored is one of Blue's friends. And then in another screenshot, Notif states, Feel like I'm losing my best friend and I don't know, I've just kept reminiscing on everything we've done together. And I just feel lost and I don't know what to do. And then person who's red states, oh, rough, I'm sorry dude, and Notif states, yeah, I don't know where else to talk about this since a lot of servers I'm in don't have serious channels and I don't usually have anything to vent about. It just feels weird not having anyone to talk to now. Bit of a cry for help, teehee. And then this orange person states, do you want to talk about it? If you need a place to vent, I'm here. And then red states, we're always here for you to do anything and stuff, obviously. Their notive states, it's not anyone's fault or anything, I don't know, I was just kind of being, I guess, distant for a bit because I became super busy with college, and I guess that's where the falling out started. By the time I had free time, I guess it was already a bit too late. And then Orange says, is it not salvageable? If it's just from being distant, I feel like being there again would be enough for them. Maybe I didn't know the whole situation and how it made either of you feel, but that's me. And then Notif says, yeah. And then Blue states, obviously about me, I don't dislike you or anything. I talk to you how I talk to a lot of others, so if that bothers you. And then Notif states, well, it feels like I lost a best friend, that's all. And then it states here, Notif venting about Blue in friend group B's server. And in another screenshot, a close friend of Notif contacted Blue about Notif acting weird about him. And then Blue states, question mark. And then Notif's friend said, if you're feeling comfy, can you tell me anything about Notif? They've been a bit weird about you a while, and it made me feel ill. Don't want to intrude on your crap, just want to get an understanding and cut off. And here's another screenshot of Notive venting to Red from friend group A after they broke up. As you can see here, Red states, you can rant, and then Notive states, Blue deleted his small emote server and soft blocked me on his Twitter alternate account. I literally don't know what to do. And then Red states, oh bro, and then Notive states, I tried bringing up and he just told me to stop messaging him. He said on Twitter he was going on a hiatus, and then Red said, oh man, maybe something bigger is going on, I don't know. Then in another screenshot, Notif shows DMs with Blue, in which Blue states, I literally saw it go poof, doesn't matter. Then Notif replies, why though, is everything okay? And Blue states, I don't know. Notif then replies, do you want to talk? I'm home now. Blue states, not really. Notive states, can you at least tell me what's going on? This has been really difficult. I just want to know how you're feeling. And Blue states, I don't know. Then Red, who is speaking to him on Messenger, says, I mean, from my perspective, outsider, I don't really know what could have gone wrong. So for me, it's like, why is he doing that? 
and then note of states. After that, he asked me to stop messaging him. I was being a bit passive aggressive towards him in the few interactions lately. Today I was fine and we were talking normally, but he just went out and did this. Was passive aggressive because I was jealous. I really regret it. And now I def feel like I've screwed up. Now the document goes into a new topic stating, Notice manipulative and obsessive behavior towards his friends and partners. Before reading, please note that these are personal experiences that both friend groups had to endure during the time of being in close friendships with Notif. Friend Group A 2021 to 2022. Notif's unhealthy obsessions towards Red. Following the breakup between Notif and Blue, Notif shifted his attention to Red. He had long viewed Red as a potential love interest ever since the beginning of their friendship, especially when Red was in a committed relationship during the time. However, Red never reciprocated those feelings. Despite that in the past before he had met Blue, Notif engaged in a pattern of showering Red with unexpected gifts and displays of affection, often referred to as love bombing. He would express frustration and disappointment when his gestures did not pursue Red in the matters of what he had envisioned, which was Red sharing the same feelings as him. So in this screenshot, Yellow, who is Jacob, also known as Notice's old friend, stated, I wasn't paying attention or what did she, and it's underlined in red, so every time she and her is mentioned, it's basically red. What did she say? She probably didn't even mean it. Her humor is more on the kiss your sister side, if you know what I mean. And then Jacob states, um, ba and then Jacob, also known as Notif, states, um, basically said I have no B words, and then proceeded to have a whole conversation about it when I clearly didn't want to. I mean, I guess an upside is that I don't like her the way I did previously, but geez, now it's just going too far. It kind of ties in with why I took the break when I did it like a month ago. I'm constantly coping with the fact that the people who I haven't had a chance with, who I want to be with, are either too deep in their own relationships or don't seem interested at all. And I'm not talking about just Reds, there have been a couple. Doesn't take much to know that it's unhealthy to rely on a specific somebody's status while knowing that they're kept up in their own relationship. It's weird and unhealthy and it feels kind of refreshing not to have to deal with that kind of burden. So I've sought out other people and I've found it just hard to get through the day in general. Be it that they're playing games they've played with me with other groups, leaving me alone, or that they're talking to people who have already established a connection with them. I've found it extremely easy to make friends, but they're not best friends who come to you if they want you to play with them. It's always me who has to type in their DMs for whatever reason. I believe I'm in a better position than I was with Pink, of course, but that's just flat out bottom line BS. I have the ability to be happy when I actually feel involved, but it's been extremely hard to even organize that, and when it goes on for too long, I become mentally strained, so no matter what happens that day, if I do get to spend time with people, I still don't feel enthralled or happy in whatever we've been doing because I mentally can't enjoy myself in those moments. I felt guiltily greedy over thinking that maybe asking too much of other people drains them like I'm some sort of attention-seeking vampire. But then I think about all the interactions that they don't even need to force throughout the day, and I reconsider. It's essentially become a thinking cycle I haven't been able to escape for some time. It just makes it flat out more complicated because of the whole mental draining thing. I'm already kind of getting over the red thing, but it's just a mint taste of reality that I'm probably going to experience multiple times in life. If this keeps happening and I stay the same forever. And then Yellow replies, You should tell her how you feel. She did mention that she did something that made you uncomfortable to point it out. So she's very open to resolve it with you. And then Jacob aka Notif states, It's not really her fault, it just hit too close to home I guess. Yellow states, It wasn't yours either. We say things to each other that sting all the time. We care about your feelings too, even if we say things like that all the time. We don't really think much of it until you tell us. And then the document provides another screenshot of a deleted tweet with Notive on his private account stating, I also admitted to liking them at one point, which is referring to Red, a few weeks, like a month or two ago, and they almost had zero reaction to it then proceeded to double down in commitment to their current relationship, which has put them for a mental spiral for the past few weeks, and it states here, he was talking about Red in this tweet, and was still in a relationship with Blue at the time while writing this, and now the document goes into a conversation with Yellow and Purple. 
Purple and Notive were on a call with each other at the time when he lied to Purple about Red reciprocating Notive's feelings back. This was a proven lie as Red was already in a committed relationship with a new partner and was never attracted slash interested in Notive romantically. And as you can see here, a message says, Jacob told me that Red had a crush on him, which seems like Red confessed to him, but now after all this, I'm having a hard time to trust what he said. And then Yellow states, Jacob turning 20 this year and dated a 16 year old. And then they replied to the message stating, what? No, she never confessed anything. Jacob is actually delusional about Red, WTF. And then now we go on to another situation regarding Pink, and Pink is another victim of Notive's bad behavior. The document states, Notive's obsessiveness and controlling behaviors towards Pink. Before continuing any further, we want to mention that we are not excusing any bad actions and decisions Pink chose, who has grown out of that bad faith and changed for the better. This is to provide more context and reasons of Notive's past controversy for getting exposed of owning an R34 account called Zilvasi. Pink was a former ex of Notive before he started dating Blue. Pink decided to make a call out post exposing Notive for owning an R34 account, being a hypocrite and a liar to his fans because of an unsorted argument in the past between them, which angered Pink because of the trauma he left with her. Throughout the relationship between Notive and his former ex Pink, it had been revealed that he would constantly be sexual towards Pink and would pressure her to send nudes for him using her mental illness against her and even admitted that his porn addiction had been affecting his schedules and time with his animation work. He did this to the point that Pink felt really annoyed from Notive constantly obsessing and stalking her daily activities. During their relationship, Pink started to progressively lose interest towards Notive because of how he treated her. Notive pressuring Pink to send nudes for him. And as you can see here, there's Discord messages in 2021 with Notive stating, Oh yeah, nude Uno sounds fun, devil emoji. Can a two player game work for that? With Pink stating, um, maybe. What if you lose twice? And then Notive states, ass pick. Pink states, bruh. The Uno thing was honestly so stupid. It was all three of our ideas. My heart was dying during that losing stage. And the Notive states, Uno is a game full of surprises. Like you can have 10 cards, the other person will have one card and you can still manage to win. And then Pink states, I know I was DMing white, like I really don't want to send nudes, help. And a Notive in another screenshot states, can I be personally honest right now? I haven't been able to animate anything profitable lately profitable lately because I kind of sort of have a porn addiction, like an actual bad one. Lately it's been getting better but I'm still having trouble trying to find time because of schoolwork. Didn't really want to tell you because I want you happy in your bed or whatever but it's really cut into my sleep time and then Pink states, should I stop sending porn? And then Notive states, am I free time in general really? And then Pink says and stuff. Notive states, I mean I have my own ways to get porn lol, it's not just because of you. And then Pink states, I'll take away your porn privileges. And then in more screenshots, Notive states, what pictures can you send then? And then Pink shows a picture of their teddy bear. Notive states, you know I hate that teddy bear too. And then Pink states, what, why? And then Notive states, because he gets to see you topless all the time. Then Pink states, no, he closes his eyes. And then in another screenshot, Notive states, excuse me, when you walk into the room, boobs flailing, he's like, staring emoji. Then Pink... And then Pink states, help no, closes his eyes, I swear I saw him. And then Notive states, no, he saw them. Well, so I guess I'm going to have to scrap the drawing. And then Pink states, what, why? And then Notive states, because it's the wrong angle of boob. And then Pink states, it's okay though. And then Notive states, me when no boob. The document continues by stating, Notive also kept Pink's nudes in a private server as revenge porn, despite her entrusting him not to save them and not saving his. Pink confirmed she did not save anything from him. Then there is a screenshot from Yellow here stating, Also I want to mention that he did save your nudes aftermath to get revenge porn if you ever leaked his. He showed it to me willingly without warning me about anything beforehand and it was in his private server. Pink did not know of this information until told very recently, about a week before this document will likely be published, which overall caused Pink to panic, stress, and cry to her friends after finding out. Pink states, I'm seriously gonna cry. I trust him not to save them and he went out of his way to break it. I never saved his stuff, I'm stressing out. 
It's unclear if he had shown anyone else besides Yellow, however once Yellow saw, she confronted Notive on the matter and had to tell him how it was wrong of him to have them saved. That was the only reason he had deleted the channel containing the pictures. Then Yellow, uh, Notive's ex-friend states, He also deleted it after I influenced him that this isn't right and not moral. He started regretting it and I assured it wasn't okay to keep these stored and he deleted the entire channel. And then here's a screenshot of Notive talking about it to Yellow. The message he sent in the said channel however got deleted and then Jacob aka Notive states, Bruh, no, I need to help Red's Bee Swarm. What do you want it for? And then Jacob states, Yellow, are you still awake? And then Yellow says, yeah. Did you see what I said at Minecraft vent? And Yellow states, I did. And then Jacob states, I think I'm actually over it now because I think the situation has got better. I don't know, it's probably obvious or not, I don't know. And then Yellow states, that's good to hear Notive, but you shouldn't really keep photos like that of your ex, whether they're not, they're a good or bad person. But I know your reasoning behind it and I'm not judging you. And then here's another screenshot of, Notive obsessing over wanting Pink to be constantly online. And then here's a message of, and Pink hasn't come online, sad face. And then White says, she's in school, WTF. Notive states, what? And then White says, isn't she? And then Notive states, I don't know, she was up two hours ago. I don't know what's wrong, which is about 5 a.m. And then White states, oh, she probably got ready for school then. And then Notive says, cries. White says, it's okay. She's getting that hashtag education. And then Notive states, I'm just gonna go to bed. And then Notive says to another friend, Yellow, she was active two hours ago, and then Yellow says, join my team, and then Notive shows an image of some like slender man drawing with her name written on it, which is very weird. During some arguments between Pink and some unsorted drama within the friend group, he turned away from the situation and influenced almost everyone to leave Pink's friend group with no confirmation of their side of the story. This made Pink really upset and frustrated because of him trying to convince her other friends to turn against her. A much more detailed explanation by Yellow of their arguments, the white sensor names featured in the screenshot are Pink's friends. So Yellow states, yeah of course, know that this is off memory and everything might not be true or inaccurate as it's from my point of view when I was confronting Notive with the breakup. So basically this was around the time I had a partner, in brackets, we recently connected and we have no bad oath with each other. Pink and Notive would have constant arguments in that. What Notive told me is that Pink kept avoiding him and ghosting him, when in reality Pink had told me she was quite stressed of Notive constantly DMing her every single time she was active on Discord. To that, she wanted some time to collect her thoughts about Notive as she realized he was quite the obsessive person. Notive would pull her away from the friend group and only wanted her to hang out with him. This made Pink feel constantly bummed out and felt like she missed a lot while hanging out with her friends. During the ghosting, I was confronting Notive the entire way of him being upset with her. I never belittled him and tried to really grasp an understanding on why he held on so much. I remember he then made a group chat with me and blank friend and another blank friend, providing some information of Pink's well-being and such. Then all of a sudden, blank friend invited Pink in the group chat and I was really shocked, but not as shocked as Notive. This would be when Notive would split me from Pink's friend group just because Blank made a grave mistake. To be honest, it was really unnecessary that he did that because we purposely asked him not to invite her, but I guess Pink had told him what really has been happening and Blank believed it so he felt bad and invited her. We were in a VC when we did this, had a few arguments and then Pink broke up with him in a call. Me and Blank were extremely quiet and kept DMing each other. Then Jacob started bawling his eyes out, begging for another chance, question mark. Pink gave him another chance because she felt horrible that he was actually gouging his eyes out with his tears. This was the final decision before the friend drama. Then the conversation continues with Yellow stating, I remember right after that, they started to flirt with each other. Pink asked us if she wants us to see her skin or something and started stripping on cool. And Notive got so horny, so blank friend and I got uncomfortable and left. Notive was extremely happy. It's like the drama wasn't even partaking anymore. And I asked him what happened and all he said was, it was wet and creamy and I was like, crying emoji. He even took photos of it and stored it in a private discord. Then after that, Notive seemingly assured everything was alright without actually knowing that Pink doesn't have feelings for him anymore and was led on by his crying. 
Narita got extremely jealous when she would hang out with her friends, especially Blank, one of Blank and I's friends, as they were former exes. He assumed she was cheating on him and went on a rampage after that. Then that was when everything went downhill and Notif sought out to me to never contact my friends again. And then Purple states, OMG what the actual frick? This is freaking bizarre, dude, what the heck? And then it states in this document, from Pink's view of the whole VC strip, she never intended to show anything more than just the side of her hip and proceeded to think it was funny from everyone in the VC laughing about it and making funny reactions towards it, which was bad on her end. Pink had tried breaking up with Notiv in cool, but couldn't because of him begging for another chance, making her feel guilty. They completely broke up when Notiv accused her of cheating on him, all because she wanted to be with her friends more. That's when he started to go on a rampage and began convincing almost everyone from friend group A to cut off Pink and her friends completely, before even letting them hear her side of the story. After the Zilvasi controversy, Pink had regretted a lot of her past behaviours and had acted immature during the argument. She's been getting the help she needed, including getting help from a therapist. Pink has changed for the better and is doing much better mentally now. Notif, however, is still indulging in his porn addiction and harmful behaviours similar to those he's inflicted upon Pink, as proven from the previous pages in this document and video. The white censored names are Pink's friend group. And then as you can see here, Notif sends a message Hey guys, I'm making the decision to completely move on from all of this. This is definitely not going to end up well, so me and a few others are making steps to avoid a giant confrontation. Others have decided to follow me in my footsteps as they don't think my current situation is healthy. And after talking to my parents and hearing what they have to say, I can safely say I am not comfortable in being in this relationship anymore. And I'm tired of seeking constant validation from somebody who is clearly who clearly is into someone else slash is incapable of currently having a relationship. Pink, if you're reading this, I wish you the best of luck and I hope you reach bountiful places in the future because you still mean a lot to me. And I'm sorry you couldn't appreciate me the way I appreciated you. Please DM me and let me know if you'd like me to cancel the orders for the gifts that are still being in process of being delivered to you. I've kicked a few people out of their request or on behalf of their friends requests for when I ever was pushed over the edge. I'm officially throwing in the towel. Ciao mi amigos. I still appreciate a lot of the people I've met here. Thank you blank 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 and blank. You guys have been absolutely awesome to me and I'm really going to miss everyone here. If you guys do not want to continue to talk to me that's perfectly okay. And as you can see here it states, Conversation between Pink and one of her close friends when she had argued with Notif at the time. And as you can see here, there's a screenshot stating, I'm so tired of having these talks with him. He always says it's his fault when I know it can be mine as well. He made me into wanting to be in the furry community. I'm not a furry anymore. I don't want to be one anymore. It's like my whole personality changed in white states. So that's why. And then pink states. He says he doesn't want to control me when I already feel so controlled. Then white states. You changed so much because of him. Pink states. It hurts so bad. I just want to go back to when I never met him. White stated, I'm so sorry we couldn't piece it together. The hints were there. I missed you so much. I'm literally crying. And then Pink states, He wants to VC alone with me sometimes, but when we kept doing it, I missed everyone so much. I felt so distant. And he sounds so disappointed when I say, let's go join everyone. I don't want to be in this relationship with him anymore. Now the document goes into a new segment stating, Notive traumatizing Yellow of their own friend group. Note, Yellow writing here, and before you decide to read this section, I just want to address that Pink and her friend group have been friends with me thoroughly throughout my childhood. And it was not easy for me to handle this situation that Notive had held me against. I was also going through the lowest point of my life, dealing with my first breakup with a romantic partner and going through several breakups between friend groups that Notif had convinced me to cut off from my own friend group because of me not wanting to split with Pink's friend group. I was miserable. Notif took advantage of my vulnerability, I fell under his influence, and he even used me as a potential love interest if Red never reciprocated her feelings back towards him. Though Notif and I have discussed this, Notif was regretful about it and mentioned that he could have handled the situation more maturely. I forgave him and can sympathise with why he wanted me to stop contacting them. I can understand the intention of being uncomfortable with a close friend contacting an ex, 
but his manipulative behaviour has always been something that he had struggled to change and has affected almost every friend around him. In brackets, in this conversation, Notif was trying to convince one of Yellow's IRL close friends to cut off Yellow before letting them hear Yellow's side of the story, yeah. And then here's a screenshot of Notif saying, so like, Yellow's been kind of doing stuff behind our backs, and she hasn't been being upfront about some things, and she's letting herself get manipulated by people into thinking everything's okay. And as you can see here, this blurred person is Yellow's friend, and they say, oh. And Notif states, today she invited Pink back to Not So Cute and Freddy's Pizzeria without contacting any of us, and when I was on my break, and I specifically didn't want to see or hear from her until it was over, and Yellow knew this and invited her anyways, and she told me beforehand she started talking to Pink without even coming to me first about it. When I was very uncomfortable about it, I thought we had all decided to cut her off for a bit, and then the mutual of Yellow states, so you all cut her off, and then Notif says, kinda yeah, it's a little hard to understand why without context, but Pink did some not too awesome things, and we'll just keep it at that. And then Yellow's friend states, ah, did you guys talk about it? And then Notif says, me and Yellow. And then Notif continues by stating, I gave Yellow a chance and she told me she's talking to Pink again because I could tell she missed her. But as long as she came to me about it first because it's strongly related to my situation. So when she invited Pink back to the service today, when I specifically told her to come to me first about it, things did not turn out pretty. And then Yellow's mutual friend states, ah. Notif states, also she's been going to Pink's friend group for moral support and saying that she thinks we've been ignoring her when we've literally been there for her always. It kind of hurts like, I think what her plan B now, lol. And then um, Yellow's friend says, help? Notice states, even after we helped her through so much, she goes to the people that we told her the most about not to go to because they manipulate and are kind of weird people. Then Yellow's mutual states, do you want me to talk to her? I'm sure this is very upsetting to all parties. And Notif states, We've tried talking to her today and it ended up nowhere because she kept saying that she'll change. Yellow's mutual states, oh, and then Notif states, she keeps switching sides. Yellow's friend states, I don't know how I feel about that, I'll see what I can do to help resolve the issue. I know Yellow's a good friend, I don't want anything to fall apart because of this. Notif states, I really want to trust her, but I can't considering how many times she's broken my promises. Yellow's friend states, It's fine to not trust her after all of this, but I do hope you guys can at least be on some speaking terms or something. Notif states, I'm extremely fragile at the moment, and I've been for a hot minute, and this kind of shattered me. Yellow's friend states, That's alright, I can go see if I can get Yellow's side. Notif states, All that weight from my relationship carried on to this, and it kind of just pushed me over. Okay, not gonna lie, most I've seen out of her responses are just her missing the point completely as to why we're concerned about her. And then Yellow's friend states, Ah, uh, perhaps later in the week or something, we should talk to Yellow and clear things up. I'll handle most of it. And then another screenshot of the 27th of March 2022 where Notif states, Has she come on today at all? So, uh, I was kind of forced to talk to Pink because Yellow's been spreading misinformation about me. Red and white. And apparently from what Pink told me, Yellow put up put all the blame on me for the way she's been acting. I'm still shocked by it. And then Yellow's friend states, Yellow did not say that. I talked to her yesterday and she's been upset at how everyone has left her in a way. And it sounds like she feels really guilty about it. That's all I got. Then Notif states, did she update you at all today? And then Yellow's friend states, we're just planning on what to do at my house. I'll talk to her about it. And then Notif states, ah, wait, I don't want to ruin her day with you. Even though she clearly despises me and doesn't care about me, which she said, lol. Yellow's friend states, she never said that when I called her. And then Notif states, she told that to friend or pink. She loves hiding stuff, lol. And then Yellow's friend states, in my opinion, I wouldn't trust what those two say. Notif states, I mean, obviously she told them something because they were furious at me. I'm not going to downplay it. And then the conversation continues with Yellow's friend stating, I'll see what I can get. Notif states, no rush, doesn't have to be all today. And then Yellow's friend states, I know, only a small question. Notif states, okay. 
Yellow's friend states, I know Yellow wouldn't say these types of things. Maybe she said something, but the others heard it in a worse lie. Notive states, she wanted to kick you out the friend group when you said the group B stuff lol. Like generally leapt to a conclusion about it. Then Yellow's friend states, she told me that Red told her to do it. Yellow's friend states, Red was in that call, not Yellow. Notive states, I'll have to ask her about it, but from what I've heard, Yellow doesn't take accountability for anything. But yeah, Yellow probably made her own conclusion like she usually does. Then Yellow's friend states, to be fair, almost all of us jump to things quickly. None of us have the right mindset to think through this carefully, I'm just saying. But all of you have the right to be angry with her. You might not even want to forgive her or anything, and that's fine. I just want things to be cleared up. I won't believe what she probably said to Pink slash and then another person's name is blurred. I don't trust her words 100%, but I know she definitely said something. But it can't be framing you in a shitty lie. Then Notive states, I am willing to believe the absolute opposite. I am trying to tell myself it isn't true, but everything she's told them has lined up with the way they have reacted towards me. Then Yellow's friend states, but don't you think they react a bit big? I don't know how to phrase it. I'll keep the living room doors closed before I ask her about it. I don't want my brother or dad to listen in. But I'm trying to think it through. Why would Yellow even say something like that anyways? She must have said something about being blocked. I don't know what else. Then note of stage, thank you. And I, I really don't understand why she'd say that sort of stuff. So now the document shows Discord DMs between Yellow, aka Notive's ex-friend, and of course Notive, with Yellow stating, Have I done anything to disregard your feelings in any way? Jacob, aka Notive states, other than my mother, no. And then Yellow states, I'm trying to be better, I'm just a little anxious because of what happened with you and Pink. So I was just wondering if I'd been a good friend to you. Yellow states, I'll talk to your mother. Then Jacob says, I don't really care to be honest anymore. I def cared for a much longer time than I should have and that's on me. Obviously I have regrets, obviously things could have been handled better, but to be H, life's just been decent and like 80% back to normal. Then Yellow states, I see. I reconnected with two of Pink's friends and we play games sometimes. If anything happens to make you feel a little uncomfortable or upset, tell me. Then Jacob states, yeah, no, I kind of knew that response was coming the second you said you wanted to talk and to be honest, I don't really feel ambivalent towards it at all. Yellow states, that's good. I hope this year will be better for you. A mischievous intent in brackets. And then Notive states, I ain't. I ain't your dad, like go be friends with whoever as long as they're not extremely atrocious people and then Yellow states, I see, thank you Jacob, I was unsure how you would react and I'm glad we talked about it. The document goes on to state, during this breakup with Pink, Yellow seemingly kept contacting Pink and her friend group about their well-being and situation. Notive would immediately take notice or assumptions of it to finding out Yellow was hanging out with them or liking their posts. In brackets, note that one time Pink actually confronted Notive about Yellow liking their tweets accidentally when they were separate and hostile towards another. Note from Pink, as I was not mentally stable and did awful things throughout this whole drama, I had a lot of regret from it. Notive knew of my mental illness and blamed it on my autism. Knowing this, he used it to his advantage to get his way and manipulate me into doing many awful things. As of today, he still stalks me. The reason of me knowing this is him, knowing I befriended his ex who I talked to for comfort. He shouldn't have known this since I did not expose my Twitter until a few months later I connected to my Roblox account thinking it was over me. I was wrong. And here are screenshots of Notive bringing up and blaming Pink's autism out of nowhere. Jacob states, because she would say she's bad and this and would never change. Bruh, she's desperate. WTF, Yellow states. I think she's like subconsciously manipulative, but she's not trying to be. Jacob states, I feel a little bad, but this is for her own good. Jacob states, yeah, I suppose it's possible, especially with her autism, she might not realize that. Then Notive states, she's very nonchalant. I can definitely tell that through some interactions that she was autistic. Purple states, yeah, she had said that before on her Twitter. Notive states, autism doesn't make you go thinking about killing other people though. And then in brackets, Pink was not serious about killing, considering Pink has anger issues. Take it as the exaggeration of someone making you rage so hard in a game that you, in quote unquote, want them game ended. Then here is a segment about Notive disregarding Purple's traumatic experience. In brackets, 
All of this happened in a group chat made by Notiv, which they always used to VC and chat with each other. The GC however got deleted after Blue cut off Notiv. During a voice chat conversation with Notiv, Purple opened up about his experience of being groomed. Before Purple could finish speaking, Notiv abruptly interrupted and dismissed Purple's encounter. After Purple had told them that he had lied about his age during those relationships, Purple did lie about his age towards his abusers. However, the fake age gap between his abusers is still large despite that, and it was still a toxic relationship regardless. As previously mentioned, Purple hasn't finished telling this full story to him. Following Purple's disclosure of the real slash lied age gap between himself and the groomers to Notive, he retracted his statement. It still came off insensitive towards Purple as it felt like Notive had assumed his encounter. Lately, it was revealed that Purple isn't the only friend he had dismissed their feelings, but a whole group of people who considered themselves a friend of Notive's. <laughs> then here is Discord messages between Purple and others stating, I also want to add that I also got groomed when I was 11 and he was the only person that I opened up about my experiences since I thought he would understand because he also went through the same thing. But then when I did, he seems to downplay it when I said I lied about my age. As if my groomer did nothing wrong for doing the first explicit messages towards me, I lied that I was 13 to 15 to my groomers. Daniello states, he 100% knows what he's doing and how he's handling it. Then Blue states, Notive compared me to you because we were both groomed by the way. Just remember that now. Then Yellow states, what? And then Purple states, what? And then in brackets, he has also apparently compared Blue's traumatic experience with Purple's according to Blue. Purple states, I need to add more context to this. Despite the fact that I lied about my age, my age gap between my groomers was still pretty big. I got groomed by multiple people ranged between 3 to 4 years. The worst I had was dating an 18 turning 19 year old and I lied to him that I was 15 while I was actually 12 at the time. Correction for the last sentences above, Purple was turning 12 in that year but was still 11 when the grooming happened. And then Purple continues by stating, By the way, to avoid misinfo, I told him that I lied about my age to my groomers without mentioning the age gap yet. After I told him the age gap I had with my groomers, he took back what he said. It still kinda hurt me that he was just downplaying the situation without letting me finish my words. And even if I was the same age as my groomers, it was still a really toxic relationship I had with them. Another screenshot shows note of telling Blue, you have to realize that you grew from then. You were lonely, I get it. You have people now and you most certainly have me. And in here it states, telling the victim to get over his essay and grooming experience. And a note of continues by stating, I was talking to Purple about a very similar subject about stuff he went through when you left the call. And he's grown from that quite a bit too. He focuses on who he has now, and in here you can see, comparing Blue's trauma with Purple's. Note of continues by stating, I don't want people to hurt you anymore. I don't want anybody to hurt anybody. As much as I would have loved for you to not have learned how trust works the hard way, you went through that and it wasn't your fault. None of this is your fault and it states here, guilt tripping the victim for being afraid of trusting him. And the document proceeds to state, even though he has shown concern towards Blue's experiences, he still took advantage of Blue in the end, something in which he admitted to himself. After Purple told his full story of his experience being groomed to Notive, he had shown his pity towards Purple for having an unhealthy age gap between his groomers. Though this shows him more as being hypocritical, as he himself was in an almost 3 year age gap relationship with a minor at the time. Purple also recalled some moments where Notive was being weird during his VCs of him and Blue. While he was in VC with Blue and Notive, Purple mentioned that Notive suddenly begged Blue to show his art he had requested from him to Purple for some reason, which is suggestive artwork, and here you can see a screenshot with Blue stating, Art he told me to draw, second one is Bara lol. He used the crop version as a profile picture in the server I was once in with you guys and you can see here is a screenshot suggestive artwork requested by Notive in this one with a spoiler and Purple stating, oh I remember that now. Purple also remembered the first ever call he had with them. Notive was streaming while searching through games in itch.io and one of the games was a furry not safe for work game. He streamed playing it with all of them on call. 
Purple was 17, he is 2 years younger than Notiv. He felt deeply uncomfortable because he was aware of Blue's age gap between Notiv and him at the time, but ended up not saying anything about it because he was afraid of starting an argument and didn't want to make assumptions because he wasn't sure if Notiv was in a sexual relationship or not with Blue. And here's the itch.io policy and rules with not safe for work content. From Purple, I didn't know at all that Notif had done not safe work art trades and was being sexual towards Blue during that time until recently. Yellow and Red weren't able to tell me earlier because they felt too bad to do so because they were both pretty close with each other. If I seemed ignorant in a previous situation, just to clarify, Notif and I would constantly vent to each other in VCs and I really looked up to him a lot as a friend and was really concerned for him. I personally had heard his side of the story of how he really tried to overcome his issues. I generally thought he had changed, but I never expected that he would have gone this far. I'll admit, I should have at least had talked to him about it, but chose not to. It was just not easy for me to believe that one of my close friends was a potential groomer. And a document continues by stating notives concerning behavior. Friend group B, 2022-2023, please zoom in if needed. This is Cyan in friend group B stating, We met Notive in around late June to early July, I believe. This was because he was friends with one of our friends, before he really talked to us. He kind of obsessed over this friend, using them to get art constantly and giving them tons of robux for this, but sometimes also seemingly no reason sometimes. We started talking to him because that friend added him to a group chat so we could all play a game on Roblox together. We invited him to our server not too long after and he was just there for a while. He would give us robux a lot without really hesitating about it but then would later complain that he believed we saw him as nothing other than someone who just gave us money. Despite the fact that some of us felt bad to take his money at this point, after the Zovasi drama surfaced, he became very, very distant from our group. We assumed he kind of just left the internet for a while during that point. He only really became active in our server again to complain in our series channel that Blue was mad at him without specifying what he did to upset Blue. A few days later, we found out what he did and everyone come off, where he would then go to his first friend mentioned and ask what happened. When the first friend and the rest of us started talking to him, his second Not Safe For Work account was active judging by the timeline of events. With the exception of one or two people, everyone in the group chat at the time were minors. And this was a friend of Blue, Cyan, giving a summary of how they met Notif and how he treated them. Notif became a little more active in the server after rebonding with Blue after he initially left them in the dark after his drama in September. Note from Cyan. Personally, Notif would give me large amounts of Robux ranging from 10,000 to 20,000 for simply doodling his avatar in MS Paint a few times when loosely mentioning in the above mentioned server that I was interested in buying a Valkyrie, mostly with the Robux he had already given me. He immediately gave me the remaining Robux. This made me feel guilty as I did not want to constantly take his money. Despite this, he would still claim that he believed we viewed him as a source of money and nothing else, despite willingly, and in most cases eagerly, giving us Robux for little to no reason. Note, the friend group mentioned is not Blue, but a young artist Notif befriended before meeting Blue and friend group B. Out of fear, Blue left group B's server wanting to get away from Notif. One friend, Grey, reached out after Notif had vented to them and another friend in a call, worried if anything had happened that Notif was not telling them. Then, as you can see here, a Discord screenshot by Grey states, My friend and I were in VC. He was venting in a channel we had. I think I asked if he wanted to do anything, so we hopped in a VC and we tried playing a game. He just kept saying, I don't know what I did wrong, man, and stuff like that. I asked, like, did you do anything wrong? And stuff like that. And he said no. And I said, are you sure? Like, multiple times, because I was already very weary. I think after I moved him to DMVC with my friend and talked to them about it, question mark, and we both knew that, you know, shortly after asking Blue, we kicked them and cut contact, and I think, I don't know, I'm tired, I'll check back tomorrow. Then the document goes on to talk about Notive's disregardment and abusement towards Peach, circumstances slash trauma, 2019-2021. Peach was a former ex of Notive around 2019. She was 16 at the time and Notive was 15 years old when they were in a relationship. 
It had been revealed that Peach didn't want to be in a committed relationship with Notive in the first place, but chose to do so because Notive started spreading around to his friends that they were both quote unquote dating, just because Peach had told him once that she maybe would become his girlfriend if they both met each other IRL, which never happened, to make himself feel a bit better about his loneliness. Notive however took it to heart, and Peach had to play along for not wanting him to be more depressed. Notive was considered to be one of her closest friends and they would vent to each other about their own personal problems, but the vent sessions completely revolved around Notive and had always been one-sided, despite Peach trying to explain to him that she wasn't able to be online much because of her living condition with her abusive parents at the time. Notive disregarded and gaslit her, accusing her of lying about her trauma, claiming the abuse from her parents wasn't a big deal and that she was just overreacting. He took her unstable life situations as an excuse for not wanting to spend more time with him. Even when he was aware of Peach struggling with homelessness and building up the courage to run away from her abusive parents, shortly after they cut ties, he still dismissed her situations. As you can see here, Peach states in multiple Discord screenshots, he would regularly speak of not safe work topics in Discord servers filled with minors. It made me uncomfortable, I was very new to the online space at the time. He's actually the reason I downloaded Discord. I just started using Twitter at the time so I had no friends slash following. I tried to explain the reason I couldn't be online much was because of my abusive parents and I wasn't allowed to have a social media in the first place. However, he would disregard it all and tell me I'm overreacting slash overexaggerating. I opened up to him about my trauma and he'd say I was lying. I felt like I could never talk to him about anything despite him constantly begging me to talk more and open up to him. So our conversations would completely revolve around him and how lonely he was and how I wasn't enough to make him happy. It was a losing situation from the beginning because even me just listening wasn't enough for him. Then Peach also states, I'm currently 20 years old. We met when I was 16 and he was 15. We are 11 months apart. I had no intention of dating him, but he would always speak so terribly of himself, so I tried to be a good friend and lift him up. Unfortunately, he took it as me being interested. He was madly obsessed with one of the girls in his friend group he introduced me to. However, she wasn't interested in a relationship. My worst mistake which caused this spiral was when he was venting about how no girl would ever love him and he hates himself and how he'll be alone forever and I wanted to make him feel better so I specifically stated that maybe if I knew him in real life I'd be his girlfriend but he immediately went to his friend's discord and told everyone that we were in a relationship before I could say anything else. At that point it was too late so I had to play along because I was scared to make him even more depressed. Thankfully at the time I was fully convinced that I was asexual due to all the things I was exposed to so we never did anything sexual. He would constantly crap talk me after all of this but I didn't care, I was just so happy to be free. Shortly after we cut ties, I built up the courage to run away and I've been completely free plus independent since. I have so much hope for the future and I'm thankful I was able to walk away almost completely unscathed. I'm horrified to see what you all went through though and I'm so very sorry that you all had to experience this. Life will get better for you and I hope he loses his power over others. And here's a archive screenshot of Notive talking about Peach after they broke up. We have Notive stating, People that say they're really going through a lot right now, that also treat other people like trash, kind of deserve everything coming to them. If you're not being caring to other people in life, then don't expect life to be caring back. And then Kaneko Kitten says in reply, FACT. Now the document continues by stating, when Peach was struggling with homelessness and financial problems, Peach decided to make a not safe for work account when she was almost 19, to try taking not safe for work commissions with permission from her fiance. Notive somehow was able to find Peach's not safe for work account, and later would talk about it in his other alternate Twitter account called Tibblers. Peach stated, I remember I went for a period of homelessness and was doing not safe for work art commissions to stay afloat and find a place, he began crap talking me on his Tibblers account. He said I was a crazy C word for making an adult art account even though the timelines match up with the Zilvasi crap and he was making Roblox not safe for work of all things. The hypocrisy and the nerve of him has caused me to boil from within. I've become so bitter because I could never speak up. The fact that he probably went searching for my adult account sends shivers down my spine. I don't know how he found it in the first place. 
I left my old main which was safe for work when I turned 18 and then around a year when I was almost 19 I started the account with my fiance's permission to make extra money since people were offering good prices for my art. And as you can see here, no tips alternate account called Tibblers stated, I found my ex's Twitter and they became a hardcore NSFW artist, funny face. I honestly don't know how to react lol, they're a crazy c word, it's scary seeing them with a bit of a following, and then someone states it's okay, it's okay. And then Tibblers, also known as Notive, states you're not a c word though, I probably had the least destructive relationship with you out of all the relationships I've ever had lmao, and then they stated are cute but also f them what the f, c word is a very strong word, and then Notive states well yeah she deserves it for the way she treated me. Ironic she has an NSFW account, she can't fantasize about having an actual relationship because she can't function in one. And then Notive states in another tweet, I don't know, they were really effed up when I was together with them. They left me on red for months and made me severely depressed. And when they came back, they doubled down on me and called me needy, crying emoji. The document continues by stating, Throughout their relationship, Notive framed Peach as a manipulator to his friends for not being able to spend more time with him due to the abuse from her parents. Peach didn't have much proof and most texts have been deleted by Notive according to her. She wasn't able to defend herself and so she willingly took the blame from his friends and himself, just wanting to be left alone to focus more on her life situation. And so the document concludes by saying, Whether or not Notive's actions are intentional or simply side effects of his mannerisms, he is still irresponsible for not dealing with his unhealthy behaviours properly, which ultimately ended up hurting the people around him multiple times. Grooming should never be tolerated or excused for obvious reasons, and struggling with an addiction or mental illness should also never be an excuse to hurt others. If he really is regretful of what he has done, he needs to accept the consequences of his own actions. They have been a burden upon his victims and friends who had to deal with this BS for a long amount of time. Again, please do not witch hunt or harass anyone that is involved in this situation, especially Notive. Please deal with the situation maturely. This document simply serves as an outlet to shed light on his behaviour. Thank you for your time reading. Now, after the document was released, many people were actually really shocked regarding Notive's horrific behaviour, and many people started turning on him. Eventually, Notive also released a response document, which was quickly taken down by Google, but I actually have it saved, so I might go over it in a future video and basically start picking it apart. Basically, in the document, he states he will be never coming back to Roblox again and that he is left entirely. However, he makes a range of unusual statements and excuses and was ratioed pretty terribly. For example, there were aspects where he downplayed what he did with Pink, for example, where he had saved her nudes against her will and then claimed since he deleted them after, it makes it all good, which is just not the case whatsoever. Or when, in another instance, he claimed he was definitely sorry to another victim, as if he wasn't sorry to all the other victims. Maybe terrible wording, but it was certainly a rushed document. Now, Lemon aka Pink actually responded to Notive's document and stated this. My statement regarding Notive's response document. Reading the response Notive had made hurt me seriously bad. How could you justify saving and showing my nudes to my friends when I asked you not to save them? I also deleted them immediately after sending them to you. You've had them since we broke up, which is over a year now. I trusted you. I couldn't believe you. And you said you liked the outcome? I specifically said I had cried, panicked, and was stressed to my friends because of it. I did not have an addiction to gore or grotesque things whenever I saw them, and I didn't have any emotion to them. I wasn't mentally well, and I had a really bad intrusive thoughts of game-ending people, and I had to vent to someone for help and advice. You don't know how scary it is to admit to your family that you have an urge to game-end them. And what about the gore you uploaded? You uploaded on Roblox a gore NSFW crop t-shirt. You're disgusting. You wanted to help me, but all you did was isolate me from my friends for you to have me to yourself. It broke me and I missed my friends. I never cheated on you either. I never flirted with anyone. You assumed I did. You kept making assumptions about me that wasn't true. Even in your response, you assumed something that wasn't true. 
and the final click, checking up on me, don't lie, you were outright stalking me and your other ex I had befriended for comfort on the first fallout. Not even she knew you were stalking her. When I found out you had noticed I befriended her, I knew you were checking on my Roblox profile, in which is where I linked my Twitter, but that was around a month the exposure was out. You never cared for me. You were scared that I would do something. Well, now I've done something. If you even care anymore, if you're even still trying to watch over me, get help. You had your chance to change and you blew it. Goodbye. And Alf, also known as Blue, also called out the downplaying presented in Notive's response document and called a lot of BS on it. So make sure to give Alf some support and every other victim involved in this situation because this has been pretty traumatic for them to experience. And this situation just seems very complicated and horrible and I hope all the parties affected regarding Notive can find solace now that their voices were heard. It's a shame to see another popular Roblox YouTuber fall but enlightening to see that victims once again can voice their struggles and abusers can be called out. Obviously this video is not intended for hate, harassment or cyberbullying. This video is just an informative video going over the entire document and situation as a whole. Anyway thank you all for watching this super long video if you made it to the end you're insane for getting this far but make sure to like and subscribe and notify more people about this situation and help it do better in the algorithm and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye also comment cheeseburger if you made it this far